From some problematic portrayals of a contentious Filipino issue to a rather bland plot that seemed like a by-the-numbers action thriller storyline, there's a lot that's gotten people in a twist about Gerard Butler's new movie. But first, we should probably take a look at what the film's about. Yeah, it looks like we're pushing through some serious weather. It's converging here over the South China Sea. Plane is a movie about planes, I guess? Okay, maybe that's oversimplifying it a bit, but it's not like that's hard to do, because if you go to the theaters to watch the movie, you'll quickly realize that it's not exactly what you'd call cerebral entertainment. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I love a good action thriller as much as the next guy, but you've got to bring something more to the table than a standard issue storyline. Explosions are only going to get you so far in life. Basically, the movie depicts Gerard Butler as a heroic pilot who's forced to emergency land his plane. That is me. I'm coming home. And at first, nobody has any idea where they are, except for the fact that they're somewhere around the South China Sea. Eventually, they realize that they're on Holo Island, which is a part of the Philippines. And I, for one, would have been thrilled to find myself in the Asian nation, because not only are the Filipino people super down to earth and cool, they also really know how to party, based on my personal experiences at least. But unfortunately, the characters in the film don't really get the chance to enjoy any of that. Because Holo Island happens to be overrun by violent rebels. Everything in Holo belonged to me. Until I don't want. More specifically, the island is under the control of Islamic militants, and they really don't like anyone barging in on their territory, regardless of whether or not their claim is legit. You can imagine the sorts of exciting scenes that such a setting could conjure up. A lot of the characters from the fateful plane crash end up dying off pretty quickly, although the best ones are obviously left alive. They have too much action-packed stuff left to do. So why exactly has this rubbed people the wrong way? Well, the understand that, we're gonna have to take a look at some recent Filipino history. Holo Island actually did get attacked by militants. It happened about 20 years ago or so, and the militants in question are a part of the notorious Islamic State. More specifically, they're a part of Abu Sayyaf, which happens to be the East Asian wing of the terrorist organization. Now, the people of Holo Island definitely suffered a lot under the occupation of these militants, and around 12,000 people that used to live on the island were forced to leave. What's more, the fighting still hasn't stopped to this very day day. So even though I understand that the minds behind Plane wanted an exciting locale for their film, and despite how perfect Holo Island seems because of its abundant potential for action, I can definitely see how this might seem kind of disrespectful. We're not talking about World War II here, or even the Vietnam War. Rather, we're talking about something that the victims of the conflict still vividly remember. And it's not like the movie handles the topic with grace, it's not even about the conflict itself. Instead, it uses this very real tragedy as a backdrop for the real plot, and that might have been enough to annoy the Filipino people, because they're still trying to heal from everything that's been happening. But as it turns out, this is just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, because the film barely shows us the armed response to the militants. It's not like the government of the Philippines was just going to sit around and let the terrorists go crazy. Nope, they sent a force of thousands of troops to reclaim the island. Now, the terrorists had the advantage of being deep in the terrain, which resulted in mass casualties for the Filipino forces. But the army has still had some real success in neutralizing them over the years. So some of you might be asking, how can the terrorists still be around if the army did a good job? Well, you try hunting militants down on a tropical island and see how well that works out for you. To their credit, the armed forces of the Philippines managed to kill about three quarters of the terrorists. This is why there are only an estimated 200 of them active today. So they've certainly managed to regain control of the region to a large extent. But you wouldn't know that by watching the film. What is that, Emilio? Thank you very much. 
because it depicts Holo Island as a lawless and violent place. And not only does this do a disservice to the people that suffered under the militants, the same people that also sacrificed their lives to fight them off. It's also the sort of thing that can harm the Filipino tourism industry, which is a big part of their economy, just by the way. So I totally get why the film's currently banned from being shown in the country. I guess Gerard Butler had to go through all that for nothing. All of what, you ask? Well, I hope you're sitting down, because it wasn't pretty. Gerard Butler almost got his face burned off during filming, and it didn't happen because of an issue with pyrotechnics, which is a fancy way of saying practical effects involving fire. That's the sort of thing that you can expect from an action movie. Because those explosions can't all just be added in post-editing, and if that's what led to Gerard Butler almost getting disfigured, it might have made sense, but the real reason he suffered is absolutely nuts. Basically, there's a scene where Butler tries to fix the plane's brakes so they can leave and fly off to safety. And while the character seems to know what he's doing, Butler definitely didn't. It turns out that there was literal phosphoric acid in there, and I guess no one on the crew thought to get rid of it before the scene was filmed. What's more, Butler had no idea what he was dealing with and he accidentally rubbed the acid all over his face. It almost got all the way down his throat, but luckily some actual professional pilots were able to step in and save the day, which I for one am truly thankful for, because no one deserves an injury like that. Butler actually joked about it in a recent interview, so I'm glad to know he's doing okay. Happy New Year. Do our iPads control the weather? Like Although I really hope the people he works with on his next gig are a bit more careful. This is yet another reason why people are up in arms about planes. But is all of this backlash truly justified? A lot of people are upset, but others seem to think differently. It's hard to argue that the film depicts Holo Island fairly and it definitely uses the very real suffering of its people for its own ends. There are some that are saying that the government of the Philippines is a bit too sensitive about these things, like that time they banned Uncharted because it showed some disputed maritime territory on a map. The Directors Guild of the Philippines also weighed in. While he felt like the film was definitely disrespectful, he didn't think that banning it was a good idea. Because that just seems like a bit of a slippery slope. In my view, the film definitely suffered from some poor taste, but everyone's gonna have their own opinion, and the final decision makers are obviously gonna be Filipinos themselves. Will these controversies stop any of you from watching Plane? Or are you still excited to sit through some action-packed escapism? In case some of you end up watching the film, just remember, the Philippines is a perfectly safe and beautiful place to visit. That's why everyone is upset with Gerard Butler's new movie.